Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Ultimate Season Pass Reward Tank for the Awakened Season that started this week as I'm recording this video. The Ultimate Season Pass Reward Tank is of course the Cobra which is a tier 9 British premium medium tank and it's this tank you'll see in here right in front of you. I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the Cobra. We're going to compare to three of its competitors in terms of the Skoda T50, the AMX50-120 and the T50-40E1, all of which are designated medium tanks in World of Tanks console, all have auto loaders, and it's better than comparing it to some of the other well-concealed uh, tier 9 auto loaders because this thing does rely a little bit on some aspects of its armor and its auto loading capability. Speaking of its auto loading capability, this thing has a four shot auto loader which can dump its clip extremely quickly indeed. It's pretty damn broken once it is loaded. However, once it is loading, it has an extremely long reload and we'll get into the details in just a little bit but all of the aspects of today's video are time stamped for you you can skip to the bits that you want to look at we're going to start by looking at how you get this tank we're going to have a look at the stats of the cobra compared to its competitors have a look at the commander and equipment setup as well as the armor profile and then i have three gameplays for you at the end to hopefully demonstrate to you how this thing performs on the battlefield and the kind of results you can expect from the cobra but how do you get the Cobra well you need to buy the ultimate season pass and if we look down here you can see that it is 6,000 gold as it has been for a while for all of the seasons previously 6,000 gold for a tier 9 premium tank is pretty damn good and it, unless this was terrible I'd say that usually for that price it's worth picking up if you can afford it and of course you get all of the other rewards throughout the awakened season and all, all of the cool Halloween stuff that comes later on in the month but if we scroll on down here and have a look at the Cobra, you can see the artwork that War Gaming Console have put up. And you can see that it has that kind of typical Centurion style hull, a very funky turret with sloped back on the top, sloped downwards um, from the middle weld. So hopefully that has some armor to protect the Cobra once you're using it on a ridge line. And we're going to have to see how this thing performs on the battlefield. But first, we're going to have a look over here on this Excel spreadsheet where we're going to compare the Cobra to the Skoda T50, the 5120, and the T54E1. Uh, all of them are auto loaders. The Skoda T50 is a three shot auto loader. The 5120 is a four shot auto loader, as is the T54E1. They're all very similar in terms of their hit points because they are tier 9 medium tanks designated in World of Tanks console. I believe the 5120 and the T54E1 are still designated as heavy tanks on the PC version. Of course, this is the console version, so we have to do things a little bit differently. Um, the Skoda T50 is a Czechoslovakian tier 9 medium tank. The 5120 is a French medium tank and the T54E1 is a... Uh, medium tank from the United States. So we're going to be comparing all of these tanks in this comparison like I alluded to at the start of the video It's easier to compare to these tanks because some of the other tier nines have better um, Concealment and this relies a little bit on its armor, but also on its gun And that's the main focal point as it is with the rest of these tanks in this comparison So if you haven't seen me do my reviews before reds the worst stat Orange is somewhere in between and green is the best stat and the ones highlighted in yellow is the updated stats with my commander and equipment setup applied. So we're going to start off with the Cobra and its XP bonus which is 5%. Unfortunately it doesn't earn any extra silver as a premium tank but you do get a nice XP bonus of 5% and of course the rest are tech tree vehicles. And now we get into the raw stats of the Cobra and its competitor. So starting with the hit points, the Cobra has 1600 hit points which as you can see is worst in class here it's 150 less than the 5120 and the T54E1 and even 50 less than the Skoda T50 which is another relatively mobile medium tank uh, so you're going to want to have to rely on some of the armor and hope that it holds out to keep you in the game whilst you are on one of your massive reloads with this four shot auto loading gun 
And now we get on to another pretty poor aspect of this tank, and that's the view range. It's a very low 370 meters, so you're going to want to boost that up as much as possible. And I'll tell you how I get to the 473 meters just a little later on when we talk about the commander and equipment setup. But it's 30 meters less than the Skoda T50 and the T54E1, and it is 20 meters less than the AMX5120. So that is one poor aspect, as is it is with the uh, hit points of the Cobra. But now we get on to the mobility and you can see that there is a lot of uh, aspects that are highlighted in green, meaning it's best in this comparison. So we're gonna have to look and see how it holds up to its competitors. So with the Cobra, you have a 950 horsepower engine, a pretty decent power to weight at 29.15, but you are limited to a damn low 40 kilometers an hour forwards, which can be very frustrating indeed. Your reverse speed is 25 kilometers an hour, which is very nice to get you out of trouble on ridge lines. Your hold traverse is 48 degrees a second and your turret traverse is 44 degrees a second. So you can see that it beats everything in this comparison apart from its uh, top speed, which is comparable to the T54E1, which does have more reliable armor than the Cobra. Um, the power to weight ratio is brilliant, but uh, once you get to that 40 kilometers an hour limited top forward speed, you are stuck there and it can feel extremely frustrating getting into position and traversing on the battlefield. You get up to this 40 kilometers an hour extremely quickly with this fantastic power to weight, but then you really do uh, lag behind as the other tanks catch you up and they uh, overtake you and it means that you're a little late into position sometimes. Uh, you can boost this up with the mobility equipment but I'd highly recommend uh, not doing that and I'll tell you why when we talk about the uh, equipment and commander setup that I am running. The reverse speed as I have alluded to is pretty damn nice on those ridge lines to get out of trouble and the traverse speeds are fantastic for getting your gun round to try and hit tanks that are trying to circle you and with the low shell velocity on this 120 millimeter gun uh, it's definitely important to have that fantastic turret traverse and hull traverse to move the hull and turret at the same time and catch up with tanks that are all uh, circling you and uh, yeah don't auto aim with this shell velocity as we're going to go through in a little bit um, because you will most likely miss it takes a long time for your shell to get to where you're going so you give it plenty of lead if that's happening but the mobility is pretty good on the cobra it's very frustrating with the top forward speed um, but it is one of those balancing factors that they've tried to implement with the cobra uh, in terms of the gun then, the Cobra has a 120mm gun, which is a four-shot autoloader with a one and a half second interclip reload. So to dump all of the four shells, it only takes you 4.5 seconds, so very quick indeed. It's um, comparable most to the T54E1's 105mm gun, which is a 2.22 second interclip reload and takes 6.66, uh, yeah, very nice number there, to... Uh, 6.6 seconds to dump its clip. The 5120 has a 120 millimeter uh, four shot auto loader with 3.33 seconds into clip reload, which takes basically 10 seconds to dump its clip. And the Skoda T50 has a small caliber 100 millimeter three shot auto loader with 1.8 seconds into clip reload and takes 3.6 seconds to dump the clip. So bear that in mind when we're comparing the stats of the guns on these tanks. Um, so in terms of the Cobra, what ammunition does it run? Well, its standard ammunition is heat, which is very unusual for a tier 9 medium tank. Its premium ammunition is HESH, so high explosive, um, extra penetration high explosive, I should say. And its third ammunition choice is regular HE. The shell velocity is the same on all rounds at 793 meters a second. Your penetration on your heat rounds is pretty nice at 268 millimeters of penetration for 360 alpha damage. Your HESH rounds have 210 millimeters of penetration, so it's very unusual to have a lower penetration on a premium round, but that's because it is HESH and you can still make this work, but it's harder uh, against tier 10 vehicles and that's for 490 alpha damage. And the regular HE has 120 millimeters of penetration for 515 alpha damage so you can see three different alpha damages and uh, it's going to be pretty hard when you come up against uh, thickly armored sort of super heavy tanks like the mouse like the e100 type 5 heavy and things like that and when you compare it to the other tanks in this comparison like the skoda t50 which fires apcr heat and he 
the 5120, which fires AP, APCR, and HE, and the T53 one, which only has two ammunition choices of AP and APCR. You can see that the shell velocity is lacking behind the other tanks in this comparison, as is the alpha damage compared to something like the 5120 and uh, the T54E1 on the standard rounds, but of course you can load that Hesh and have that very juicy 490 alpha damage, which is the highest alpha damage in any of uh, the tanks in this comparison. And then you have the HE or the regular HE with 515 alpha damage, which is comparable to the 120 millimeter rounds on the AMX 5120, um, and it's much better than the 50. Uh, T Skoda T50 sorry and the T54E1 so you can see here that it's very quick to dump its clip it's got very poor shell velocity the standard heat penetration is very nice that means you won't lose penetration over distance when you're firing these heat rounds and they're probably going to be more useful to you in a majority of situations but when you do find yourself loading the hash against a lightly armored uh, opponent 210 millimeters is plenty of penetration to go through and it, it really does dramatically increase your penetration by 130 alpha damage and if you do load a magazine of HE then you're looking at 515 alpha damage and yeah you're going to be doing some serious damage to the enemy if you decide to do that but I'd hold on uh, loading your Cobra up just for the moment as we talk about the gun handling how many uh, ammunition it carries or how much ammunition it carries and also the DPM of the different ammunition choices. So the Cobra, how is its gun handling? Well, as you can see here, uh, a lot of it is highlighted in red and orange, meaning it's worse than this comparison. And it's kind of to be expected with the pretty high alpha damage you can expect on the premium hash rounds and the regular HE, and because of the burst damage potential of the Cobra. So you have an aim time of 3.8 seconds, an accuracy of 0.38. The DPM on your heat rounds is 1,584. On your hash rounds, it's 2,156. And on your HE, your regular HE, it's 2,266. It takes you 50 seconds to reload your four shells, which is a very long reload indeed. Yeah, twice as much than the Skoda T50 in this comparison. You only carry 32 rounds of ammunition. And uh, yeah, when you get through your four shells in 4.5 seconds, even though you do have that very long reload, reload if it's a longer kind of game and you've been firing a lot of chancy shots you can run out of ammunition very easily in the cobra so watch out for that in terms of its gun depression it's the best in this comparison at 10 degrees which is very nice on a ridge line however watch out for its pretty poor gun elevation which is kind of somewhere in the middle in this comparison it's seven uh, degrees less than the skoda t50 which has 20 degrees of gun elevation uh, but it is slightly better than the amx 5120's typical french gun elevation of uh, 11 degrees um, so you can see here from the dpm that the uh, as you go up the ammunition to your premium then your regular he it will go up because the alpha damage goes up and that's very natural um, and how much do you deal per clip well i've done it here for you as you can see it's 1440 damage per your four shells with the heat if you penetrate every single hash shell you're looking at 1960 damage for one clip and if you penetrate every round of your regular HE you're looking at a whopping 2060 damage per clip but uh, those hash rounds are very dangerous indeed it's an extremely good clip potential and you can deal that much damage in four and a half seconds that's basically the equivalent of a tier 9 uh, tank completely obliterated and you can completely cripple a tier 10 tank in four and a half seconds with this fantastic um, into clip period of 1.5 seconds uh, but what equipment and commander setup do i run on the cobra well in terms of my equipment i run advanced optics gun stabilizer and advanced gun lay and drive and in terms of my commander i run six cents born leader rapid loading steady aim rapid aim snapshot run and gun situational awareness and track mechanic so in terms of the equipment optics to boost that view range because it is extremely poor and I want to be able to spot for my stealth, myself, my stealth, it doesn't have any stealth, even though it's a Cobra. Um, 
the gun stabilizer to improve the accuracy as much as possible because you do have that 0.38 accuracy it's not as bad as the t54's 0.4 accuracy but it is worse than the skoda t50 and the amx 5120 and with the pretty damn big aim time of 3.8 seconds that's going to be extremely annoying uh to use uh that 0.38 accuracy so i'm trying to boost that up as much as possible and the advanced gun lay and drive to boost my um 3.8 second aim time to get it as close to sort of three seconds as possible as you can see here on the right and in terms of my commander um born leader rapid loading uh and six cents as standard rapid loading to help the dpm as much as possible and then all of the gun handling perks i can because of the gun handling on the cobra situational awareness to work in conjunction with the advanced optics to boost the view range and track mechanic because I don't want to be tracked and caught out while I'm reloading and I feel like it was one of the better skills although maybe use something like firefighting you can definitely invest that track mechanic into a different skill I sometimes play around with the commander builds and this was just a commander I used on another medium tank so what does my commander and equipment setup do to the stats of the Cobra well it boosts my view range to a respectable 473 meters it boosts my turret traverse with the gun handling uh, commander skills to 53.52 degrees a second which means that it's actually slightly faster than my hold traverse now which remains at 48 degrees a second but that's very useful for getting your gun round on target in terms of my gun handling then i now have an aim time of 3.08 seconds so basically three seconds which is still pretty long but dramatically better than the 3.8 seconds which is closer to four seconds of course which is terrible for a tier 9 medium tank my accuracy is now 0.25, which is a lot better. It's a whole world of difference than the 0.38. My DPM of the heat has gone to 1919. My DPM of the hash is 2612. And if I penetrate every round with the regular HE, it's gone to 2745. But the big one is those heat and air. The hash DPMs have jumped up dramatically. The heat is usable in more scenarios, but the hash can come in handy when you're firing at lower tiered or same tiered opponents or very lightly armored targets and the dpm of 2612 is pretty respectable for a tier 9 tank and if we look at the dpms of all the other tanks you can see here with the standard rounds that 1440 um without any equipment is terrible compared to the 2016 on the skoda t50 2100 on the 5120 and nearly uh 2400 or 2359 on the t50 e1 so you can see the dpm differences this has pretty damn tragic dpm but it's extremely broken once it's loaded because of that 1.5 second aim time 4.5 seconds to dump your magazine and deal 1440 1960 or 2060 damage but that's it for the stats of the cobra compared to its competitors we're now going to have a look over here on tanks.gg and have a look at the armor profile of the cobra so this is the tanks.gg website where you can look at the stats of any of the tanks that are in the pc version and some of them translate and correlate with the stats of the tanks that come over from the pc version into world of tanks console so this is the cobra and i'm using the gun to look at the effective armor values of the object 140 the tier 10 soviet medium tank because it has apcr a standard with 264 millimeters of penetration and heat rounds which have penetration of 330 millimeters and 320 damage so it's a good uh, sort of comparison to see what kind of uh, things you can bounce with this tank so when you are looking at the Cobra and it as it is looking at you dead on as we'll try and get the gun facing directly at us uh, you can see here that a lot of it's highlighted in green so to go through the upper plate you're going to need 221 or more millimeters of penetration to go through the upper plate to go through the upper portion of the turret so the bit that is slanted backwards if you're on a level, play, level playing field with this tank you're looking at about 235 to 245 millimeters of penetration to go through the upper part and don't be tempted to shoot the sloped back portion below the gun when you are on a level playing field with this tank because you're going to need 300 millimeters uh, between 270 millimeters to 200 
to 300 millimeters of uh, penetration to go through this and it's very easy to bounce shells indeed um, the lower plate is a bit of a shot trap when you are either above this tank slightly or you are the same height as this tank you can look at it here it's a very strong lower plate indeed you're going to need 292 to 300 millimeters to go through this lower plate um, so if it's coming around a corner and it's giving you its lower plate and upper plate you can see here that it's extremely strong indeed your lower plate you would need now 316 millimeters or more to go through and your upper plate 280 to 300 millimeters on the far corner so shoot the corner that is closest to you if you want to go through at this angle um, although you can go through the drive wheel here because the cobra has terrible side armor at uh, 30 millimeters which means it's extremely bad at side scraping and if this thing is side scraping you need a 91 calum caliber uh, gun to overmatch the whole of the side of this tank um, with your ap or your apcr rounds um, so 91 kind of 91 millimeters or more caliber is very easy to get at sort of tiers 8 9 and 10 a lot of tanks have 105 120 millimeter guns or higher so you can overmatch this is a terrible side scraper and the only real reason for side scraping is to give your opponents less um, of your tank to shoot or because you're trying to debate them into just hitting the tracks and dealing no damage but if these things could come around a corner um, don't be baited don't be tempted into shooting the front of the hull or the lower plate because it's a bit of a shot trap. Go through the drive wheel if you can or wait for it to expose this part of its turret. If it's not looking at you, you're going to need 220 to 230 millimeters of penetration to go through. Uh, to go through the side very easily because it's 30 millimeters of uh, armor uh, on the side of the turret is 40 millimeters of armor you're going to need between sort of 80 to 100 millimeters to go through reliably depending on where you hit because there are slight anglings on the side uh, the rear of this tank is 30 uh, millimeters or more of penetration to go through so very easy to go through with he as is the back of the turret you're going to need between 35 and 45 millimeters of penetration um, if this thing is angled at a 45 degree uh, and you're trying to shoot its turret definitely shoot if it's not looking at you that part which I have just mentioned is if you try and shoot the rest of the turret here you can see you're going to need between 280 to sort of 400 millimeters in places on the lower part of the sloped back uh, turret. Uh, it does have a cupola which you can penetrate with 110 millimeters or more of penetration reliably uh, 60 to 80 can go through it but it depends on what kind of part you hit and if this tank is using the full extent of its 10 degrees of gun depression on a ridge line if it's just showing you your upper plate you're going to need 305 to 310 millimeters of effective armor to go through it if it's not angled and if it's angled well good luck and if we switch to the heat rounds of the 120 you can see here uh, that if you're kind of the same height at it, you can go through with the 330 but it's not going to be a hundred percent chance unless you shoot the bit closest uh, to you um, so when it's using its 10 degrees of gun depression on a ridge line and if you couldn't see the upper plate the lower plate would be an easy penetration for 20 220 millimeters or more penetration but if you're just looking at its turret the upper part of the turret becomes effective at about 265 to 270 millimeters the lower uh, part underneath the gun is the easiest to penetrate at about 250 millimeters of penetration needed and then the under part of the turret would be 245 millimeters of penetration and this sort of bit here closer towards the turret ring will need about 262 millimeters or more penetration to go through you do have these two bits here on the sides which are sort of back from the slope portion and if this thing is using its gun depression there you can go through there with about 206 millimeters uh, to 210 millimeters of penetration there and it should be a pretty easy penetration for you um one thing to note is that on the back of this tank you only have six degrees of gun uh, depression so if you're running away from a tank you can't use the full extent of your 10 degrees of gun depression and if you're a low profile tank get underneath this tank and it probably won't be able to shoot you but i think that's all that said for the cobra and its armor layout basically if you're playing this tank you're going to want to angle it 45 degrees as much as possible bait people into shooting your upper plate your lower plate and the angled parts of your turret um, just wiggle your turret backwards and forwards like that um, and try and raise your gun if they're shooting the top part because that will make your upper part of your turret extremely strong you can see here that if you raise it up in the air to the sort of extent of your gun elevation here you're going to be looking at getting your um, 
armor values to a sort of auto ricochet angle and if someone's firing heat at you then that's the only way to stop them penetrating the upper part of your turret but then you do expose this massive under part of your turret because it's a very weird shape indeed um, if someone's side scraping and giving you a small shot you can hit this bit of uh, armor here which is um, about 28 to 30 millimeters of armor that's a very easy penetration to go through it's 30 millimeters of actual armor and you're going to overmatch that with 91 cannon the guns 91 millimeter caliber guns or higher but that's it for me waffling on the information on the cobra we're now gonna head over to the gameplay and see how this thing performs so we're into the first gameplay of today's video here in the cobra we're on casserine it's an encounter battle we are top tier there's plenty of tier 8 vehicles as well as some tier 7 vehicles to chew up with our fantastic damage potential with our heat and our hesh rounds. We're going to head towards a position centrally to overlook the capture circle and see if we can get some early spots on for ourselves with the boosted up view range that we have with our commander and equipment set up. And uh, yeah, you can have a good feel now for the mobility of the Cobra. You can see that we got to our 40 kilometers an hour top speed. Um, very quickly indeed we kind of outran most of the tanks from the get-go but now they're all starting to catch up and uh, yeah it's just a very frustrating aspect about the Cobra it's obviously a balancing aspect because of the very very insane damage potential the Cobra has um, in terms of its burst damage but yeah it is frustrating nonetheless so we're going to try and uh, use our mobility and our traverse now to uh, get underneath all of these big ridge lines and see if we can avoid fire from the enemy artillery try and juke them out because I know they're probably going to be gunning for us and as I say that a shell comes in and if you saw me at the start of today's battle looking uh, through all of the different uh, screens at the start there I was looking at who's on the enemy team what kind of tanks I'm coming up against I'm trying to make a note of what platoons are on the enemy team there are plenty of Cobras about on the first day as I was playing uh, this game in particular but on my first session there were so many people playing the Cobra people have picked up the alternate season pass it seems to be very many people indeed this looks like a very popular season uh, understandably because it's the Halloween season um, but yeah it looks like uh, there's lots of platoons and I was uh, trying to figure out if there's going to be any particular positions I shouldn't go I'm going to be looking at what artillery is on each team because I know different artillery obviously have different damage different shell trajectory for instance the French artillery have pretty bad shell trajectory they find it hard to dip over um, big ridge lines and get their shells on you so it can um, depend on the artillery and the platoons where I go on the map so that's what I'm looking out for to start off with um, so we got onto our position there, we poked over the ridge line, we nearly got caught out by an ISU 152, we used our fantastic reverse speed of 25 km an hour to evade the ISU 152 shell and then we get three subsequent shells with our heat rounds into the ISU 152 before he pulls out and now he's a one shot. And then we catch out this cruncher who gets taken out by our, another friendly Cobra and then we have one shell left in our magazine. I've spotted this Centurion 7-1 and we make it aim the whole way in and we get a nice magazine there pushing our damage total already in the first three minutes of today's battle to 2.1k direct damage and 463 assistance and then we're um, still six cents that so we're just moving around using our good traverse speeds trying to stop the artillery shooting at, uh, shooting at us and uh, hitting us if he decides to shoot at us and we're uh, trying to pick our next target. Um, I'm trying not to waste the time while I'm reloading doing nothing at all I'm trying to scout out for my next opponent because I want to make the most out of this autoloader I want to get the best DPM possible in every game so I'm always looking for my next target scanning the mini map I'm um, seeing what different angles I can come in from and seeing who my next target should be uh, we are up in this battle by two tanks so it's looking pretty positive so far the encounter circle here on Kasserine is extremely hard to actually win unless all of your team just sit on the outskirts which does happen occasionally but it is very hard once you're all there you can be flanked from different positions and I can get over the top of tanks like this I asked the tier 7 Soviet heavy tank and uh, just going to edge over so I don't actually uh, wreck my tank get two auto aim shopping shots into the back of him and yeah he's taken out and that's what the Cobra's about it's so damn good at just picking off those targets 
with the hash rounds you can splash low how targets to death with one magazine you can get four different kills if they're on low hit points depending on what ammunition you're firing and you can also severely cripple a tier 10 tank you can take out an equal or lower tier tank with your magazine and it's just insanely powerful um, in my play session with the cobra on release day i had a fantastic win rate i didn't feel like i was playing it particularly well i was obviously playing quite aggressively trying to try out all aspects of the tank see what the armor can do and i had a fantastic win rate i had plenty of kills and a consistent amount of damage and you're going to be seeing the the kind of damage that i was having roughly on average in the first couple of replays in today's video and the third uh, gameplay is going to be the best damage game or the highest damage game that I've had in the Cobra since its release and it just relies upon your teammates not being so good, the enemies not being so good and uh, a longer drawn out battle for you to be able to reload repeatedly. So we use the reverse speed to get out of the way of that Centurion 7-1 trying to evade his fire and then we try and duke him a little bit because we were caught on our reload and that's one of the worst aspects of the Cobra but he pulls forward and we just splash him twice, we didn't even penetrate and we managed to take him out and that's an equal tier medium tank out of the game and now it's 4 against 1, it's looking very good for this game and I'm going to just hopefully get these final two rounds into the last remaining medium tank and take down this game with the help of my team. So nothing amazing in this game, nothing too high but still an all round pretty good game in the Cobra showing what it's capable of. It's very powerful indeed. I wouldn't say it's overpowered because of that crazy reload and the terrible gun handling and the pretty poor view range as well, but it is very broken once it's loaded. It has that capacity to completely wreck your day. Like the Waffen Traeger Alpha 100 does at tier 10, this is like a tier nine version of that in the form of a medium tank and it can just absolutely yeah, wreck your day and send you back to the garage very quickly. It's extremely broken indeed, but we managed to splash for more than the enemy Cobra Splash does, take that uh, Cobra out, you get 4 kills, 3.5k direct damage, sniper medal somehow in the Cobra with the poor gun handling, finishing the MVP slot, 1418 base experience points, and uh, yeah, those 4 kills, 3.5k direct damage, 668 assistance, we block a show which kept us in the game, and we make a loss even with a premium account because of the very expensive Hesh shells on this tank, it's a very expensive tank to play, but that's it for the first gameplay, Let's head over to the second one. Righty ho, so we're now into the second gameplay of today's video and we're here on Arctic region in the Cobra and we're going to head towards the central location of the map and see if we can spot out towards the south as the tanks get into position and this is where the limited 40 kilometers an hour is so damn annoying because if I was able to get there a bit sooner I'd probably spot a lot more for myself in this game. However, it's just enough power to wait to get us to that 40 kilometers an hour and sort of get into position without getting caught out here in the open. I've loaded Hesh to start with because I have noticed from the team list we are top tier, meaning there's going to be more than likely some squishy targets for us to use these Hesh rounds on. And I wanted to see if I could get a nice uh, magazine to start off the battle. Uh, whenever you're reloading you want to make sure that you're moving and getting ready for your next location to negate that very long reload and make sure that you're making um, yourself as sort of efficient as possible we go up here with our enhanced view range we spot a barask up there and now we have some lovely side shots on these tanks that are coming uh, down th from the south on arctic region we get two penetrations with the hash three penetrations and bye bye kb3 and then we get our fourth and final penetration on a t43 and yeah that's a perfect magazine 1824 damage uh, we would have done more damage but of course we finished off that low health kb3 and now we're back reloading um and yeah that's just how mental the cobra is it's just completely broken come up annihilate someone and then fall back and reload um, of course I could be rushing out and it'll be game over for me so in my opinion it's not overpowered in a in a good player's hands most tanks are extremely good this one could be very dangerous indeed um, but I wouldn't say it was overpowered I'd just say it's very crazy when it's loaded it's just broken um, it's like the Waffentrager RV100 um, but it tier 9 and uh, yeah slightly less damage and uh, slightly harder to hit with a little bit more armor so we come out there um, try and get a shot into the freedom we pull back because we're loading the hesh again for this second magazine we didn't want to fire into any of the objects because we would have um, had our hesh shell 
uh, absorbed by wooden logs and uh, fences and that kind of thing. But we fall back, get two shots into the freedom. Yeah, and then he's gone. We've still got two shots left. Um, there's no more uh, foreseeable targets, in my opinion, um, for a while. So we're going to choose to reload. I was thinking about going now down towards the south, but I've noticed the whole glut of enemy tanks that are towards the northwest of this map. And we're going to go up and see if we can get some crossfire with our mediums and tank destroyer that's in the north of this map. And hopefully by the time we get there, um, relatively slowly, we should be loaded. And we're loading the Hesh again because it seems to be doing good work for us. So... Another 2.4k damage already in this battle within 3 minutes and 534 assistance. This tank is extremely um, good in my opinion for boosting your win rate. I seem to be winning so many games in this tank because I'm taking out so many tanks very quickly. Even if I'm not dealing an ex <laughs> a, a lot of damage myself, I'm not dealing those high damage number games. I aim terribly on this Cobra but yeah, we have 4 shells and I managed to finish him off with my uh, third shell. I have one left in the magazine but I'm going to go for the reload and uh, it can be extremely frustrating when you do miss shells in this tank because of that limited ammo capacity but also because um, you just have to wait for so damn long to get that reload back in and I'm just sitting here praying no one comes around the corner um, and then I'm going to pop back out and see if I can get some extra shells into um, the tanks that are still sat there in the northwest corner but for the Cobra um, in terms of what I'm running in my med kit and repair kit, I run the enhanced med and repair kit and the combat rations because I want to improve my view range and my gun handling DPM as much as possible. We're still loading the Hesh, so if we actually hit this Cobra, we should uh, be able to deal some substantial damage to his turret, even penetrate if he's slightly below us, but uh, our shells go wherever they went. Uh, that's typical Cobra things there. Sometimes it works perfectly like the first clip in this game and then sometimes it just completely derps into the ground or just goes into oblivion or into another map or something like that and I'm getting shot up now by the Cobra and the Centurion 7-1. We're up by two tanks to one in this game so I'm feeling fairly confident. I'm sat here just hoping the Centurion pulls out and I'm going to try and get a shot into the upper part of his hole and hopefully it loops down and penetrates or into his cupola. Um, but in this situation, I don't really want to take another shot. Um, I've started really well in this game and then I've kind of just tailed off towards the end. But I wanted to include this replay because this is kind of a typical kind of game that I've been having in the Cobra where you have a perfect magazine, then you have one that derps, uh, then you make a mistake and then you have to reload for ages. And uh, I'm having a great win rate in this tank. Not um, a ton of damage, but pretty decent damage for a tier 9 medium tank and it just seems to be very consistent indeed um sorry for the no audio on uh this gameplay or at the end of this gameplay i should say anyway um as you can see there there's a microphone flashing up someone was getting pretty angry at our team and telling me that i should push forward um but yeah i got my reload in 14 seconds left and i want to uh, make the most out of my last few shells as possible and at least get one more kill and that's what the cobra does it it sits there it pounces it ambushes it strikes it gets kills it deals a lot of damage very quickly and then that might be the only damage you do in the game or you might be allowed to repeatedly reload and it's those games where you're allowed to repeatedly reload that are the real danger and you can see here that we're not penetrating the tracks of the Centurion 7-1 because that was a stupid place for me to shoot I should be shooting on top of the turret into the cupola into the back of the turret but we didn't even penetrate that um, but we, you still do a substantial amount of splash damage when you are using the Hesh rounds on the Cobra and that's why I think it's even better than the PC version even though it has a slight nerf coming over from the PC you can deal splash damage on HE you can't because the HE mechanics were changed and you deal hardly any um, damage with like HE rounds on in the game unless you're in a particular situation but in terms of here on War, War of Tanks console we finished that game in the MVP slot even though we didn't do an awful lot we finished with 3.6k direct damage 534 assistance three kills uh, we make a 34,000 silver defeat because we were firing mainly Hesh in that game uh, a six minute game but 3.6k damage isn't too bad at all and I'll take that any day of the week so that's it for the second gameplay we're now going to go into the third and final game of today's video and it's my best game in the Cobra yet 
So then, we're now on highway in the Cobra in our third and final game of today's video. And like I said at the end of the last replay, this is the best game that I've had in the Cobra as of yet. And the reason for that is because it's a slightly longer game than I was having during my play session. It just allowed me to get multiple reloads in and I sort of move around the battlefield, pick my prey off sort of one by one and do a fairly healthy amount of damage for a tier 9 tank and... I hope that this review has been, or is going to be for you, um, very informative but also a very good indication of the kind of things that the Cobra can do and the kinds of frustrations that it can also bring. Uh, like now, there's nothing that Caro can do, he's caught out in the middle, he's a tier 7 tank, we get two shells in, our friendlies take him off and we're back reloading again for 40 seconds and for some people this might be a really boring tank to play because um, you do have to get your magazine off and then you have to wait for 40 to 50 seconds reloading and sort of uh, get into a different part of the map and uh, it's just uh, it's just one of those preferences with playstyle if you enjoy really high burst damage um, like the Waffentrager LV100 or you enjoy autoloader gameplay in general then you're probably going to like this tank be it this is a very derpy auto loader compared to a lot but it has to have some kind of balancing feature because it is already pretty broken with the insane burst damage it can do in four and a half seconds and the different ammunition choices that you can choose uh, in the cobra but in terms of this game here on highway we managed to get those shells in there into that carrot and now we're going to head forward and help this heavy out who has pushed forward into the town i was just waiting for um, so people to look like they were even trying to go halfway there before I went there because I've come to the town too many times on this map and been on my own but now we're going to come and help our tier 9 heavy tank here and uh, we are top tier so I'm going to be relatively aggressive in the Cobra I found that this thing doesn't reliably bounce but it can bounce the occasional shell um, sort of in the game or one to three sort of shells in a game just enough to keep you in the game this cs44 comes around the corner unfortunately we only tracked him with our first heat shell and then with our subsequent three we put three into him and uh, we've pushed our damage total to 691 but now we're in that awkward phase of the game where we're in a reload and it seems to be the whole enemy team have just been like oh you know i'll come now while well, he's reloading but that's just one of the things you're going to have to put up with with the code where you're going to have to find little old coves like this make sure you're hidden by hard cover use your teammates distraction and then use their distraction to come around and uh, yeah put your clip into someone um, tear them up and then just rinse and repeat basically and uh, it might be boring to you or you might really enjoy this kind of gameplay but for 6,000 gold I think the season pass is worth it and if this was a standalone premium tank I'd probably get it because I feel like it would be a very fun tank um, to try and mark because it is quite challenging to get those higher higher damage numbers because of that pretty uh, crappy reload and the long reload on this tank but you can see there that we put the three into that HMH M51 that came around we set him on fire because you can do that with this caliber of gun especially dealing uh, round after round into the same location with the fuel tanks and ammo racks and things like that it can do a lot of module damage and critical damage which is quite funny indeed and yeah it's funny when you load the hash and you set people on fire because you're putting 500 damage into them basically uh, they're on fire then you can put another few <laughs> damaging rounds into them and completely take them out of the game but I'm willing to take a uh, shell here to come round and try and finish taking out that Yag Tiger. unfortunately we bounce our first shell there as we kind of panic against that Conqueror but he's using the smaller gun on the uh, Conqueror unfortunately we managed to get our subsequent two in and now we're just trying to get out of uh, the way and uh, a tier 7 Chiri helps us and we say thank you because uh, yeah poor guy playing a cheery that's a bit of a hilarious tank but not exactly the most competitive um, but as you can see we've dealt 4.2k direct damage already 417 assistance we've blocked 135 damage and there's still uh, six enemy tanks left on the enemy team for us to uh, get this cobra the dinner that he wants and it's a very hungry tank it just wants to devour enemies that come into its path 
uh, but you're only allowed to devour them as quick as your reload allows you to so uh, I know I'm on a one shot for everything on the enemy team at the moment and a splash of artillery will kill me so I'm going to try and not get spotted and I'm going to try and use my teammates vision for my advantage and see if I can get some longer range shots in this is where um, boosting your gun handling as much as possible really does come in handy and the shell velocity at sort of mid to long range is, is very difficult you get used to it after a while but if you've been playing tanks especially cold war tanks that have very fast shell velocity this is going to feel very alien very foreign to you and you're just going to, just going to take you a bit of time to get uh, used to it it's basically double the lead of a lot of the shell velocities in cold war and it's about yeah 300 to 400 meters a second slower than a lot of the ap apcr rounds that are in sort of tiers 8 9 and 10 so we're two tanks up, it's seven versus five. A lot of them are going towards the north, are so going towards our cap, so I'm just gonna head back to my cap. I don't want to get capped out because that happens all too frequently. And we've loaded our Hesh uh, rounds here. You can see that I only have one heat round, so I'm not gonna wait 40 seconds just to reload one shell. That's something to watch out for. You can do that with this tank. It can be so annoying when you do that and you didn't realize that you only had one shell or two shells loaded. So definitely watch out for that. We get one shell into that bear there uh, and our Waffen Trigger Panzer IV finishes the bear off. And now it's down to four enemy tanks. This is Kampf Panzer 50T. Um, we get one sort of splash damage shell in and then one penetrating shell in. And when you roll high there above 500 with these hash rounds, it feels really, really juicy indeed. And you can see that's pushed our damage total already up to 5.4K damage. And there's still a fairly healthy amount of uh, hit points on the enemy team. We get one of uh, our last Hesh round there into that fortress. Unfortunately, he was angled slightly and I believe it dipped into his tracks, which means that we only splash damage. But anyway, uh, any kind of damage kind of helps in this situation. And now we're just reloading and I'm just waiting um, for my reload to go in before I probably get only one more magazine left and this is where it's frustrating where a single fire gun would be more enjoyable probably to play and easier to play for some of the newer players it's probably very easy if you're a newer player or a player that struggles uh, to remain in the games and struggles with survivability you can get yourself into trouble with this tank you can rush in thinking you can take uh, an enemy out very quickly indeed and then you can absolutely dump a clip um, at the wrong time or you can miss every shell or something like that and then it's going to be really frustrating for you. Uh, we put two of our Hesh rounds there, it looked like they were fully aimed, it looked like they were going on target and unfortunately for us I think what happened was there was a fence or something in front of that fortress and unfortunately two of our shells just got absorbed but then we had two subsequent shots and two subsequent kills taking our damage total to 6.3k uh, direct damage and 417 assistance and then it's just the medium tank and the artillery on the enemy team we are capping the base as well and i'm trying to get i believe in a minute i might be flagging the attack on the command rail trying to get our team not to cap this one out as I wanted to do some extra damage. The enemy artillery gets taken out, it's five against one. Um, I'm trying to get my team to attack, but they seem intent on capping, as is the way. Uh, but nonetheless, that was still a pretty decent game in the Cobra, showing you what it's capable of if it's left to its own devices and the game's run for long enough for you to reload multiple times. So we actually make a small profit with a premium account there. With the high caliber 1772 base experience points, we finish MVP slot, 4 kills, 6.3k direct damage and 417 assistance. And that's the best damage game I've had or the highest damage game I've had in the Cobra. Uh, the two previous games I've shown you are more of the average kind of games you can expect, but it's given me a very high win rate. I haven't played it particularly well. It's very broken when it's loaded. It's very powerful. I think it's worth the money just for the season pass anyway, but for a tier 9 premium tank, it is worth it. And yeah, I would highly recommend getting this season because it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun with all of the Halloween stuff later on. But that's it for my review of the Cobra. I hope you've all enjoyed this review and found it informative and or entertaining. Thank you all so much for your support. And until next time, I'll see you on the battlefield. And bye for now.